in general, the Jiu Jitsu that I teach here at the Academy, well, how we teach Jiu Jitsu, it's more, it's more about waiting for the right time and controlling distance and, and patience. So it's a very almost, very MMA street fight, you know, be very close or be very far away type of Jiu Jitsu. There aren't these, you know, real in-between positions. And if there are, we mentioned that there's a certain vulnerability to strikes. So I would say that we're very known for always considering, you know, punches and kicks in the Jiu Jitsu role. We've been in Torrance for since 1992. So this is a new location for like the last seven years, six years. And just this school and our school now in Beverly Hills, our new academy that's been open for seven months. It's great because the way we offer Jiu Jitsu, it's you can anybody from a five year old child to a 22 year old kid who, you know, has been on a computer for 21 years and has never done any physical activities all the way to Jake Ellenberger to whoever MMA fighter to football player to attorney, a mom, a child, anybody can learn something. So it doesn't matter who you are, when you walk in the Gracie Academy, you're gonna walk away having a little bit of a, you know, a little a better understanding than what you had before. And the reason that's possible is because us as instructors, we pretty much teach everybody how to work with everybody and make every rolling experience, whether I roll with a 25 year old girl or a 27 year old MMA fighter, I'm gonna kind of adapt the way that I roll so I still benefit even though I'm not going as intense with somebody who isn't a professional or somebody who's lighter and weaker. Nonetheless, I'm still moving quickly and I'm taking the most that I can from that experience. So there's a lot, a lot of conditioning that goes on here with our students to really help each other and cooperate and flow. And once again, I think that's what really attracts Jake to myself and this building and my brother Henner is the, the cooperative nature of the building and the helping of it versus many times you go to an MMA school or not even MMA but more of a Jiu Jitsu school and they teach you one or two moves but not really and then it's more like just kind of you know let's grapple let's roll especially when you do MMA there's there could be this you know like okay let's test this guy out let's roll him and let me just tap Jake you know, 25 times in front of my students, but me beating him is least my worries. Me, you know, watching him become faster and more aware is where I'm like, okay, I'm doing good, we're progressing. You know, I'm not, I'm not really needing to boost myself. And even the students who are here, you'd be surprised how even a student who Jake can possibly dominate and beat, without a doubt, he, um, these students, they themselves might put themselves in bad opportunities to allow him to control their back and attack them. So they are almost willing to sacrifice themselves to let Jake practice an offensive position like back control or have them in a, on the mount position. It's, it's crazy. The level of helping that goes on is like unheard of. I was not raised in, on a mat where I was told to let somebody just pass my guard and side mount me and hold me down. You know, and allow them to kind of explore the offensive position. I was not really taught that too much. My grandfather would say it a lot, but not really from the generation before me of my father and my uncles. Uh, I feel like my grandfather was like the, the big, you know, he kind of sparked this whole idea of becoming a scientist and you know, exploring every position and not just going out there and using your physical attributes to, you know, to dominate and be on top, but instead allow yourself to, you know, be in the inferior position for the purpose of studying jujitsu. So he taught me that when I was maybe 18 years old, 19, and over the past couple years, I'm on this trip of this whole keep it playful mindset. And keep it playful is the fact that I keep it playful when I let Jake or anybody else that trains here get me in a triangle or get my arm in an arm lock and now I, tr I attempt to escape and I fight to get out so that's me trying to build them and their control of the arm lock or their control of the triangle so at the same time it's me trying to build myself and my comfort in those dangerous positions so this is I would say over the last two years is the greatest shift in the Gracie Academy in the sense of helping and flowing. And this today, this day of sparring on Tuesdays is where it's the most emphasized. So when I rolled with Scott today, it was very much like 
no matter what, don't stop moving. I'm sure I can hold Scott down and just control and dominate him for five minutes and he can't escape my control without a doubt. He might escape once, I'll get on top again and I'll hold him down. I've been training for 29 years, it only makes sense. So, but why would I wanna do that for? I wanna, you know, I wanna help him and help myself and build speed and build reflexes so we had a great role today. I would say you should do this, you roll, you play like that, you know, once and then you go and you take everything, give nothing once. So it's one day on, one day off. One day keep it playful, one day keep it killer, you know, and you just switch back and forth. If, if you don't allow yourself to be in bad positions, when are you gonna be in bad positions? When you don't wanna be in a bad position, when it counts, when it's a real fight in the street, in a competition, in the UFC, who knows where. So if you wanna be comfortable there, you better be there. And the time to be there is when you're on the mat at home with your friends training. Every single fighter across the board has a hard time giving things up. And it's, it's too easy to be the best in your gym and dominate all your training partners because that's the reason why you are where you are in the UFC or whatever you know, fighting MMA event you're fighting, you're part of because you're the best in your gym. And I have this talk with so many guys who fight professionally and they say, yeah, I had a great training session today. And I say, what do you mean it was great? Did you, how many times did you end up underneath somebody with them throwing punches at your face? And they say, never, not once. You know, I pretty much control everybody. And I, how is that great when you're on top controlling everybody? You know what I mean? I mean, people are not preparing for worst case scenarios. And that's okay. And you can tell who has and who hasn't. You know what I mean? You see some fighters end up somewhere bad and they completely, you know, overreact and expose themselves and give a punch or give a guillotine. And then you see someone like Anderson Silva, I know it's not a really a fair example because he's so good, but this guy gets mounted on by Chell Sonnen and he just kind of holds his biceps and lays there and he's not even panicking to get out. He's behaving as if he's in the gym with one of his, you know, 24 year old kid training partners. And he's fighting in the UFC against Chell Sonnen who, who almost beat him the previous fight. These kind of things like this. Like, how do you do that? There's only one way. You either practice it now or you don't. You either, you know, you either do everything you can to be ready for the event, the fight, or you don't. And I think a huge part of getting ready is, is that scientist approach that my grandfather, you know, Eddie Gracie, instilled in myself and in my brothers and so on. So you can work for, you know, in a five minute round, for the first three minutes, you can work not letting anywhere, anybody get anywhere offensive on you, meaning you just fight to be on top the whole time, the first three minutes. And then the last two minutes, it would just seem wise, the last one minute if you want, it would seem wise to allow yourself to land in the inferior position and then practice escaping. So you're just killing two birds with one stone. Now, even if you just did this three days a week, only for the last minute and a half of every five minute sparring round, that would be amazing. That would be 80%, 90% more than everybody else. And when I say, you know, be in a bad position, many people train like being underneath and then exploding out, meaning defend a little bit and get out when you can. Defend and get out when you can. I mean like, don't get out even when you can. Because getting out when you can in your house amongst your friends could be a lot easier than getting out underneath somebody who really wants to kill you. So Great. push it, you know, really push yourself and, and do what nobody does. Like I, to me it seems so obvious, but yet I myself only started doing this two years ago. But like the question is like, what will you not do to be ready? for, you know, your future opponent. It's just a whole new way of training, which you can tell the best of the best, and we already know who the top, you know, five, 10 names in the world are. They just behave with a certain level of comfort when they're in bad positions. And it's not because they're just born, they're just naturals. They're putting in the hours, they're putting in the training. You could say that Anderson Silva's Jiu-Jitsu is one of the best for, you know, for pulling off that triangle. For, for surviving for that long, because jujitsu is survival. So the fact that he was able to be underneath Chelsonen surviving and then win like that in the end, that's like, that's so much, 
you know, credit to him and understanding of jujitsu and use of jujitsu. But then you have guys like, you know, Damian Maya who go out there and win in the first round and go, go, go and submit and just tap people out. And that's also good jujitsu. But you don't, I haven't seen Damian Maya under somebody for five rounds of five minutes. Not that he couldn't do it, by all means, he could, probably could. So there are different ways to kind of judge it. But in, in general, everybody's getting good. And these days, you know, people are even, there's, they're inventing new submissions every day. New weird, there's all kinds of like arm triangles. So you don't have to even be a jujitsu guy necessarily. A lot of wrestlers are catching on and doing good arm triangles and, you know, dars chokes and anacondas, who knows. So I don't really have anybody that stands out a whole bunch, but there are many people also who are very aware of the submissions out there, right? And they're very, you know, just very quick to defend and slip out of and not get caught by guys who are really good. Like I just watched Mark Munoz when I watched him, I was with him when he fought Damian Maya, like he did not get tapped out for three five minute rounds. Like that's a huge accomplishment on Mark's part. There's a certain, I mean he, you don't do that. You know what I mean? Guys who are really, really good don't not get tapped out by Damian Maya. So it's pretty much, I feel like jujitsu is something where anybody who starts training it will see amazing results very quickly and and Mark is an example of that and you know every day there are more and more examples of that because all fighters now are, are training it and they're all doing so well. Ronda Rousey is like a machine it's it's ridiculous I've had the privilege of training with her uh, a couple times just like three weeks before her fight a month before it wasn't even anything serious I did not teach her an arm lock or anything but she just just flowing with her and playing and just the the level of you know base and position and understanding and the reflexes and the speed it's a whole different level and it's it almost feels like I'm rolling with somebody who is a black belt in jiu-jitsu and she's trained jiu-jitsu you know here and there but she never had amazing jiu-jitsu like years and years of training and got a black belt under somebody but yet she also similar to Jake and similar to most similar to most athletes and most fighters there's this very quick ability to just pick up on things and you know make it happen. But it was a great fight and I look forward to just seeing more of her matches and hopefully, you know, training more. I'm not a huge fan of MMA. Like I don't I don't like to watch MMA until I feel like jujitsu starts happening, right? Like people could be standing up, just banging out, throwing punches. And it's almost because not that I don't understand boxing, but it's very much um, you never know. It's very much maybe luck a little bit, even though I don't believe in luck. Both guys just banging out, and then all of a sudden one guy just gets a little clip on the chin and he's down. So if the fight ends like that, I'm like, eh. So right now it's just so much about, you know, once the fight goes to the ground, then it's like, wow, it gets super exciting. And hopefully, you know, Henner and myself just keep doing Gracie breakdowns because right now when you watch MMA, there is still a little bit of booing, right? I just watched Brendan Schaub just fought right now, and people were booing at the fact that he was on top of uh, LeVar Johnson, just holding him down, you know, trying to pass the guard a little bit, but just trying to maintain position. So the world is, has not fully accepted jujitsu yet. So I guess that's kind of our path is to, our, our goal is to just educate and show how amazing jujitsu is and I was just thinking about the fight coming up of Nick Diaz and GSP. And it's almost like if there's one fight, I would hope no referee ever stands up off the ground. No matter how much booing is going down, like don't stand them up, you know. And of course, many people are thinking, no, let them stand up so Nick can, you know, you know, bang out with GSP and so on. But no, let them, you know, if it goes to the ground, let it stand on the ground. And that's, I hope, to one day be like the the evolution of the UFC and it will only happen once fans you know boo when the fight is st stood back up which that might be 10 years from now but when it happens it's going to be a good day